Good afternoon. Uh, it's Thursday, February 16th, and this is Sam, a.k.a. Batman. Uh, I have 20 days until takeoff from Austin to Atlanta and uh, about 22 days until I hit the trail on March 10th. Um, I'm going to get picked up uh, at the REI in, at, I think it's the Perimeter REI, by Ron Brown, hopefully, and he's going to give me a ride up to Amicalola. I'll spend uh, Wednesday and Thursday night there. Thursday, I'll check in, get my hang tag, uh, take a little day hike, because uh, I'm not going to do the approach trail. I think I would might have mentioned that earlier. Um, and then Ron will pick me up uh, Friday morning, <coughs> excuse me, um, and uh, take me up to, uh, I think it's Big Swamp Gap. Uh, it's on uh, Forest Service Road 42. It's the trailhead for Springer and uh, north on the AT. I'll hike north on the AT and then come, or hike south on the AT to Springer, sign in, take the uh, requisite photos, and then head out uh, with my intended goal on the first day is to get to Hawk Mountain, maybe a little bit further, uh, depending upon how crowded it is. Last year, it was mobbed. <laughs> so, and this year, since I'm leaving on the same day, I'm presuming that it's also gonna be crowded. Uh, really getting excited, uh, starting to get down there in days, um, starting to get all my uh, gear dialed in. Uh, have a couple of things I still have to resolve. I've pretty much decided on the tent. Uh, I need to decide on a pack, and I think I know which way I'm going, but I haven't made a final decision. Uh, what I wanted to do right now is go over the clothing that I will be carrying in my pack. Um, go over the clothing that I will be wearing on my uh, body, my back, as I uh, head out that first day, uh, then my rain gear, and then finally uh, some of the gear that I may be changing into uh, when the weather warms up um, and I don't have to worry about uh, uh, sub-freezing temperatures or snow. Um, that I'm thinking that's going to be somewhere after Mount Rogers in Virginia. Um, we had really nice weather after the Smokies. I, I mean, it wasn't that it didn't rain, but the weather was just perfect. I mean, daytime temperatures in the 40s uh, and 50s, nighttime temperatures in the mid-30s. Great sleeping weather, great hiking weather. Uh, with that being said, um, I will uh, get, get on with the clothing. Um, if uh, you like this video, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and I will hopefully see you all on the trail. Uh, take care now. Okay, let's start up on top on the left side of the table. Um, the first thing is my uh, sleep clothing. Uh, I've got a pair of Patagonia mid-weight uh, leggings, which I will wear only um, at night, uh, either in the tent or around the campsite. Uh, next, I've got a Smart Wool 150 quarter zip uh, mid-layer uh, long sleeve. Again, only for wearing around the campsite or while I'm uh, in bed uh, underneath my quilt. Uh, with that, I've got a short sleeve uh, Patagonia, I think it's called a Cool Max. It feels like cotton, but it's not cotton. Uh, I really, uh, really like these shirts. Uh, they wick well, um, they don't stay wet, they dry really quickly, uh, and they feel nice and soft against the skin. Uh, up on top, I've got a pair of uh, Smart Wool uh, uh, briefs. Um, I switched uh, last year on the trail. I used the REI um, boxers. Um, they weren't as comfortable as these, and these give a little bit more support. I've got a pair of Patagonia shorts. I think they're five or six in shorts, um, they have a mesh lining. Um, they um, uh, have zippered pockets. I will generally use these only at night, sometimes to sleep in uh, when I'm not sleeping in the leggings. Uh, I can hike in them though. Um, they're really comfortable and the addition of, I think there's three pockets, three zippered pockets really works well. 
They're nice and light and they dry really quickly. Uh, should it get really cold on the trail um, uh, when I'm hiking, uh, I have a pair of smart wool, wool, excuse me, light leggings. Again, I'll wear them under my pants, my trousers, uh, if the weather gets really, really cold. Um, I've got a pair of Injinji toe socks. I swear by them now. I haven't had a blister in years wearing these things, and they don't allow my, my toes are starting to dive under one another, and I, uh, these keep uh, the toes from rubbing against one another. Again, no blisters. Uh, I can't remember the last time I had a blister. Uh, for the first part of the hike, I have um, a pair of, uh, or this is my spare pair. Uh, they're darn tough crew socks. Um, uh, you know, this is a pair that'll rest in my pack. Um, I have a buff, a winter buff, um, which will, you know, it can be a hat, a beanie, a neck gaiter, a face uh, covering. Uh, but I'll carry that for me uh, for the first uh, couple of weeks until the weather starts to warm up. Uh, next is my uh, go-to North Face beanie. I've had this, I don't know, 10 years, and I carry this all season, all seasons, winter, fall, spring, even in the summertime. I always want a beanie with me, particularly when you're at elevation, uh, someplace in the whites or the green mountains. Um, I've got a pair of uh, glove liners um, and a pair of wool gloves, again, that I will carry um, for the entire trail. I carry these uh, in the summer as well as in the winter uh, and fall. So uh, that's it for the clothing that will go in my pack. Uh, next, we will do the clothing that's going to, uh, and this comes in at about a pound and a half, that's a little on the heavy side, but once I get rid of the leggings, um, the weight will go down and, you know, in the buff, the weight's gonna go down. Um, all of this goes into a Sea to Summit bag with a, with a window in it um, so that I can make certain at night when I'm pulling stuff out of my bag, I can see what I'm pulling out. Uh, so we're gonna switch over now to the clothing that I will be wearing initially when I step off from Springer. Okay, um, this is the clothing that I will be wearing, with one exception that uh, is either uh, added on to what I'm wearing or goes in my pack, depending upon what the conditions are. Um, and I'll get this uh, get to that as we go through this. Uh, first off, I've got Injinji toe socks and Zensa um, foot compression sleeves. Um, I have some foot problems uh, due to my age and the compression sleeves on my feet help a lot. Um, I've got a pair of um, uh, dirt, not dirty girls, excuse me, darn tough um, crew socks, which I will wear until the war weather warms up and I switch to my regular uh, trail runners, uh, in which case at that point I will switch to the micro crew uh, sock by darn tough. I've got a pair of Dirty Girl gaiters. Um, I have to add the uh, Velcro to the back of the shoes, and I'll show you that when we go over the shoes. A pair of Zensa uh, calf compression sleeves. Again, really helps to combat fatigue when you're doing big miles and carrying a big pack. Um, I have uh, a thigh compression sleeve, um, again, uh, when you get to be uh, my age, you, you need all the help and assistance you can get. Uh, I've got two knee bands. I have uh, arthritis in both knees. Uh, generally, it doesn't give me any problems, but the, the, the bands do help, particularly when I'm going downhill. Uphill doesn't bother me, or at least it doesn't bother my knees as much. It certainly bothers my lungs. Um, I've got a lightweight belt that I think I got from REI. Uh, coming down below... I have a uh, smart wool uh, light uh, to mid-weight uh, quarter zip long sleeve uh, mid-layer. Um, if it gets especially cold out, um, that will be the first layer I put on before I resort to my puffy. Uh, my puffy is the enlightened, um, I think it's called the Torrid. I just washed it so it's hanging outside. Um, I'll show it to you when we uh, do our final equipment check. I have a pair of Prana 
Hiking pants, um, I really like these pants. Um, they are, uh, to a great extent, water resistant. Um, they fit well. Uh, they uh, have uh, cargo pockets, zippered cargo pockets on both legs. Um, and the only disadvantage, I think it would have been more helpful if they had a zippered side, at least so that you could uh, slip them on over boots um, and over crampons um, or micro spikes. Um, I've got a, um, again, a Patagonia Coolmax short sleeve shirt, um, a pair of smart wool, uh, boxer briefs. Um, I, this is the second pair, obviously. Um, I have a, um, Under Armour, uh, hoodie. And I really like this hoodie because it has an integrated balaclava and face mask. Um, which, uh, you know, negates the need to carry a separate balaclava and face mask. Um, it is very warm. Uh, it's got a cinch um, in the back so that you can tighten up the hood. It's got thumb holes so you can bring the um, uh, sleeves down over your hands. Um, and it's got a, a zippered pocket on one side so you can slip your wallet in when you're in town. I got this idea from Wild on the trail. Um, I had a hard time finding it. I had to go to a bunch of different stores, couldn't find it online. I finally, finally found it uh, at Academy Sports uh, in Georgetown. Um, wouldn't do without it during the uh, shoulder seasons. Um, this will go back in May at some point and then rejoin uh, me uh, when I reach New Hampshire and Maine. Uh, my initial pair of shoes are going to be uh, Lone Peak, or Ultra Lone Peak. I think they're called the Hikers. Um, last year, I started out with uh, the Lone Peak, just the trail runners. Um, when I did have to resort uh, to micro spikes, I found that they didn't support micro spikes as well. Um, and I think these will give me a little bit more ankle support. I'll wear these again. Uh, probably uh, until I get past Mount Rogers, and then I will switch over to the Lone Peak Trail Runners. Um, these are a size nine and a half. I normally wear a nine. Um, they're great for me because I have a short, wide foot, and this has a nice, wide toe bo box. The only disadvantage is they do not have the Velcro on the back uh, to secure your gaiter, so I'm going to have to add that. Uh, these weigh in at about the pair, 1.9, uh, 1 pound, 9 ounces. So they're about 4 ounces heavier uh, than, uh, 4 or 5 ounces heavier than the, than the trail runners. Uh, they're not waterproof. Uh, you know, we all know why you don't want waterproof shoes. Um, but uh, I've worn these a bunch of time on day hikes. Um, they uh, wear well. They give great traction. And I really like them. I like ultra shoes. I uh, never thought I would like a zero drop shoe, but I've become convinced that they're at least the shoe for me. Um, I've got a pair of uh, outdoor research sun gloves. Um, I'll wear these pretty much the whole trail. I will probably go through two or three pairs of them. Uh, they seem to wear relatively easy. And I have a buff, um, a lightweight buff. I also have a ball cap that I uh, picked up from uh, the ATC. I just haven't gotten it yet. Um, so with that being said, that's, that's all the gear that I will be wearing. Seems like a lot of gear. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, smart wool uh, mid-weight um, shirt will only go on when, if the temperature drops, it's got to drop, for me, it's got to drop, you know, into the 20s because I'm, I'm, I'm a warm hiker. I don't need a lot of insulation. Um, but I would put that on in order to avoid putting the hoodie on, um, uh, uh, you know, my, uh, my, excuse me, uh, the puffy on. I like having the puffy to get into when I crawl into bed. Uh, that being said, I'm going to now go over my rain gear um, and then the gear that I will be shipping myself in May uh, when uh, spring turns to summer. Okay, rain gear. Uh, first thing in line is my Marmot rain pants. I've had these 
I don't know, 10, 15 years, uh, they have to, you know, start to develop some holes. Unfortunately, um, I patch them. Uh, they're in the seat, unfortunately. Um, but I, I love these pants. Uh, they're not the lightest pants, but they have all the factors that you look for. Um, they've got, uh, you know, quarter zips on each legs so that you can get them on over boots and crampons. They've got zippered pockets. Um, they've got a good snug waist uh, when you need it. Uh, and these have done well by me. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, I don't think Marmot makes them anymore. Um, you know, in order to cut down weight, they probably cut out some of the zippers. But I will hate to give these up when the time comes. I likely will switch uh, to uh, the Z-Pax Virtus rain pants uh, as the weather warms up. Um, but for the shoulder seasons, um, both uh, when we get into Maine and New Hampshire and for the first two months of the trail, um, I'm carrying these babies because they, they're just awesome. Uh, a lot of times I'll sleep in them at night if they're not too dirty uh, because they'll add an extra layer of warmth. Um, so that's it. Um, I do have a Virtus um, uh, rain jacket from uh, Z-Pax. I wore this uh, all last year on the trail. I wore it on the John Muir Trail. Um, I really like this jacket. It, it, you know, it provides the right combination of warmth and weight. Um, it is light, but not too light. It's, you can cinch the waist um, as long as you remember that the cinches are in the, you know, down below. Um, uh, it, uh, the zipper runs nicely. You've got a cinch on the hood and you've got one pocket. The only problem I had with this jacket was last year, uh, when um, after I had left the trail and gone out to California and was doing some hiking out in California, the, um, uh, the pocket uh, seam separated, broke away. So I sent it back to Z-Pax and they um, sent me a whole new jacket. So this is a new jacket. It has not been on the trail. It hasn't been backpacking, but if it's anything like its cousin, um, it'll be it'll work out just fine. I like the jacket, great jacket. Um, I have a pair of REI rain mittens. Um, you know, the rain mittens over your uh, uh, wool uh, gloves uh, provide an extra, uh, in addition to providing protection from the elements, provides an extra layer of warmth. Um, I, I did have another pair of rain mittens that I had to seam seal, and I did a really crappy job on the seam seal. I just couldn't get them to seal properly. Uh, never was very good in arts and crafts. Um, and then I have a pair of Randy Sun um, uh, waterproof socks. I did not carry these last year. I thought about carrying them, but at the last minute decided against it. Um, I may not carry them this year also. Um, they, they're, in addition to being heavy, I mean, they're, they are rainproof. Um, you wear them with a liner and it helps with the condensation and moisture inside. Um, but they are bulky and I have a tendency, you know, they have a tendency, I think, to fill out the shoe too much, particularly when you've got other uh, socks on like uh, like a liner and in my case on the compression sleeve. So it remains to be seen. I also um, have a pair of seal skins that I rarely use. So it remains to be seen what I'll do with these, uh, whether I'll carry them or not carry them. Uh, it may be you just have to let your feet get wet and dry out. Uh, so that's our, that's our ring. That's my rain gear. Um, and that's it. And so right now we'll go on to what I intend to change into come warmer weather uh, when we hit uh, the Virginia Highlands. Okay, this is what I will be changing into uh, when the weather warms up. Uh, what I have is a Columbia, I think it's called a Silver Ridge. I've had this for a long, long time. Um, I really like this shirt. Uh, it's got a mesh inside and it's vented in the back. It's got snot buttons on the two pockets. There are two breast pockets. It's long sleeve, um, but I understand you can actually get a short sleeve too if, it, if you can find it somewhere in stock. Um, 
So that's what I generally will wear, um, at least in the East. Um, in the West, I would probably wear um, uh, either an outdoor research or one of the other uh, sun hoodies. Um, this is a pair of REI uh, convertible pants. They're called the Sahara, uh, like the desert. Um, I, I, I like these pants with, 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 with one exception, which I'll go into. Um, they have two cargo pockets on either side. They've got uh, some Velcroed rear pockets. Um, they've got a full fly. Uh, they've got a zipper all the way up uh, to the top. The zippers are actually color-coded, uh, so you can figure out really easily uh, which one goes where. Um, they dry quickly. They dry very quickly. Uh, it's easy to get the lower part on and off. If I was to say there is one disadvantage to this pants, uh, pair of pants, it's the front pockets. They, they have a strange cut to them. Um, it's, it's almost difficult to get your hands in the pockets. Um, you know, it's not cut like a normal pair of pants. Um, Columbia actually has a pair of pants. I don't, I can't remember what the name is. They're convertible. They're very similar to the Sahara, um, but they're very difficult to find. I think they may have been discontinued. So unless I can find a pair of those in the right size, this will be my go-to pair of trousers. Uh, when the weather gets warm, I can strip down um, and wear them as shorts or wear them as long pants. I actually prefer hiking in, in long pants. Um, don't have to worry as much about ticks um, because I can spray my uh, pants legs, which I will do before I leave. Um, I also, it, you know, there's not, you know, it's not, you're not going to get affected by poison ivy, etc. So those are the trousers. Um, I will be switching from the Lone Peak uh, hiker to the Ultra Lone Peak. Uh, sixes. Um, I, I actually prefer the fives, but the fives are hard to get now. Um, and I don't like the sevens. The sevens, they made a, a, a number of significant changes. And I don't know why um, you had a good thing going with the fives and the sixes. You know, the, 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 dis, the, the difference between the five and the six that I don't like is the five had actually, for your uh, gator, had a little metal ring down there to hook your gator onto. For some reason, they thought they would save, you know, you know, a thousandth of a gram by getting rid of those. I really like uh, these Lone Peaks. Um, I hiked, um, you know, 700 miles of the AT last year. Um, the John Muir the year before, um, hundreds of miles, uh, both in the White Mountains uh, and in the Sierra on these uh, variations of the Lone Peaks. Uh, I have never had a blister. Um, they're light. Um, they're well cushioned underneath as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, they're, they're not as cushioned uh, or protective on the sides. That's why I had two broken bones last year. But, you know, that's the price you pay. Um, I will be switching to them. I think they're called Micro Crew Darn Tufts. Um, uh, a, an OR lightweight uh, hat. Uh, this doodad, which you get wet, uh, there's beads in it, the beads expand, and you put it around your neck, and it has a cooling effect. So that is, that's it for what I will be hiking on, obviously, uh, in once the warm weather comes. Obviously, a lot of things will go home. Uh, at least one of the, uh, the tees will go home. Uh, uh, probably, at least, well, not probably, at least one of the mid-layers uh, shirts, long sleeve shirts will go home. The buff will go home. Um, I, you know, before I uh, get back out in the trail, because I'm coming off the trail in May for a graduation, and that's about the time I'll probably switch over. Um, I will go over what's staying and what's going. So that's it. If you have any questions, uh, please drop me a line, a uh, comment. Uh, I would have really appreciate it if you would subscribe, hit the like button, uh, and see you on down the trail. Take care.